If you just bought a finger spool in order to allow you to launch lift bags, deploy DSMBs, and more, then this video is for you. In it, you'll learn how to properly set up your new finger spool so it's ready to go when you're underwater. Let's get into it. Finger spools seem pretty simple on the outside. You have a metal or plastic spool, a couple holes to put your fingers in while holding the spool, some eyelet holes, the line itself, and then a double ender usually that clips off to the finger spool or holds the line in place. However, when you first purchase a finger spool, there's a little bit of prep work that's needed in order for you to get it ready for use. To get started with almost all brand new finger spools, the manufacturers actually include too much line on the spool itself for it to actually be usable. If your spool is filled too much, the eyelets on the side of the spools are actually going to be covered by the line and they won't be usable at all, which is not going to help us when we're underwater. It's also really easy if there's too much line on it to actually slip over the side of the spool and then it just becomes an unraveled mess and you're never going to untie it underwater. To fix this problem, we actually need to take 20 to 25% of the line off of the spool and just cut it off completely. I know, I know, you're probably thinking to yourself, this is a brand new spool. What do you mean I need to cut 20 to 25% off of it? Well, luckily there is a use for the spare line, so don't throw it away. Just make sure when you cut it that you singe the edges with a lighter, and that way it doesn't become unraveled at all. And up in the cards, I actually have a link to a video on how to tie bolt snaps using spare line like this. And you can use that line for that or many other applications as well. Because you have to cut excess line off, this is why I actually recommend buying a longer line than what you actually think you need when you're going and purchasing a new finger spool with line on it already. So for example, if you want 75 feet of line, make sure you buy a spool that has 100 feet of line on it. So when you cut 20 to 25% off, you're left with 75 to 80 feet on the line itself. As a general rule of thumb, you want to have enough line that you have 1.5 times the amount of length that is your maximum depth that you're planning for your dive itself, which will allow for a little bit of drift since that line isn't going to go straight up to the surface perfectly up and down. It'll probably be dragged a little bit behind behind you or a little bit in front of you, depending on current or if you're swimming or not. As an example, this means if you were planning to dive to 60 feet, let's say as a maximum depth, you would want to have 90 feet of line or 1.5 times 60. That 90 feet will make sure that you have plenty of line that at your deepest depth, you can deploy a DSMB or a lift bag, for example. And even if it is a little bit slanted off to the side due to a current, it'll still reach the surface for you. Now, if I want 90 feet of line at the end, that means I'm actually buying a spool that probably has 110 to 115 feet instead. That gives me that 20 to 25% extra length. And that way I can go ahead and cut off that decent chunk of it for me, that 20 to 25%, give me 90 feet at the end, and I'll have plenty of line for my dive. I'll have links down in the description to a finger spool that I've used myself and I recommend to my students as well. Again, once you've pulled off that 20 to 25% of the line, so you have plenty of space in the eyelets around the spool itself, go ahead and cut that, burn the edges so you don't have any type of fraying both on the line that's on the reel as well as that line that you removed, and then go ahead and store that excess line away. And again, you can check out the video in the description or that was in the cards previously, and you can use that line to attach bolt snaps or do other things with it if need be. Now that we've cut off that excess line, we're gonna go ahead and tie a couple loops in our line so we can make it easier to use underwater, even if we're wearing gloves. So if we're diving in cold water with thick gloves, we don't have as much dexterity, but we'll still be able to use the finger spool without any issues. First, we're gonna pull about 24 Four inches or 61 centimeters of line off of the spool. Then we're going to go ahead and double that line back on itself, forming a big loop on one side. This big loop makes it really easy for us to attach a DSMB or a lift bag or something like that, and I'll go over that a little bit more later in the video. To tie this loop, we're actually just going to use a really simple overhand knot. First, you're going to hold the line together with one hand like this. Then you're going to make a loop around this finger. Hold this loop in place with one hand between your fingers, and then take the lead and end of your big loop and pass it up under and through the loop that you're holding until you snug that knot down and cinch it down nice and tight. If you have any excess line coming off the end of that knot there, you can just cut that and then burn it with the lighter and then smudge it out with the side or bottom of the lighter and that way it just gets smushed right against the knot and that'll help that knot never come undone on you at all. Now we have our spool with a big loop on one end of it, which will allow us to pass the spool through, which gives us a girth hitch so we can pass that through to a DSMB or lift bag and easily attach those items together. But with that said, we do actually want to do a couple more things to make this even easier to use, again, while wearing gloves and just make it easier on us in general. Next, we're going to go to about the halfway point of this big loop. And on one side of it, we're going to go to the middle point and tie another overhand knot to make another loop 
inside of our big loop. This tiny loop that we're making is gonna make it easier to pull our line off the finger spool itself when we're wearing gloves. And I'll show you how this works a little bit later in the video. You'll tie this loop just like you did the big one, doing an overhand knot, pulling it through, and just making a nice tiny little spot that you can grab with gloves. It doesn't have to be a big loop at all, just a tiny little one to give you a spot to grab on when you have those thick gloves on. Finally, on the end of our very big loop, we're gonna go ahead and tie one more tiny loop like we just did, but at the very end of our big loop. So it'll be a tiny loop right at the end of our big loop. The big loop has a tiny loop right in the middle. This tiny loop can also be done the same way we've done our other two with a simple overhand knot. And again, it doesn't have to be too big at all. We just want it big enough that we can easily slip a double ender into it just to give us something easy to clip off to on the line. This loop also gives us a little handle when we need to undo our girth hitch, whether that's underwater or after we've surfaced and gotten back on the boat, it just gives us a spot that we can easily pull on to get that girth hitch to release and pull out our DSMB or our lift bag or whatever that might be. Now that we have our loops tied in our line, we can go ahead and store that line wrapped back around our spool and then store the spool for use underwater. First, when we wrap this line back up, we wanna make sure that the tiny loop that we made halfway through our big loop is sticking outward because that's gonna be a handle that we can pull on as we wrap that line. This is what we'll pull on even if we have gloves on that makes it easy to pull the lead line of our line off the spool itself. Once you get to this tiny loop and make sure it's sticking outward, take the remaining line and you're gonna feed it through one of the outlets on the spool itself, pulling the lead end all the way through. This is why we needed to remove some of that excess line so we can actually use these eyelet holes that would have been completely blocked otherwise. Next, take that lead line that's through the eyelet and pass it back through the next eyelet in the spool itself, just so you can pull it back through and it makes it nice and snug so it won't unravel on us at all. Then we can take that tiny loop at the very end that we created and attach our bolt snap there. And this gives us a nice package that allows the spool to hang from our bolt snap and be a nice tight compact piece that won't unravel on us at all. Finally, to make sure the bolt snap doesn't come undone, we're going to take that line, wrap it back behind the double ender itself, underneath the latching gate one or two times, and then we'll kind of just wrap it around the double ender until we can clip it to the actual eyelet on the spool itself. So then the double ender is wrapped, attached to the eyelet, the line is under the latching gate, making it a little hard to actually put tension on the uh, latch gate itself, so it's harder for it to unsnap itself. And then that spool is fully compact and tight, and it won't come undone, it won't unravel on you, or anything like that until you're actually ready to release the line. Now, when we're ready to use the spool underwater, all we have to do is pull that spool out of our pocket or unclip it from the D-ring on our butt or on the back hip, and then we'll take that double ender and clip it off to a chest D-ring so it's out of the way. Then, using that small loop that's exposed on the outside side that was halfway from our big loop, we can tug on that and that'll pull the lead end through the eyelets of the finger spool itself, exposing the line for us. Now we can feed that line through the DSMB or lift bag or whatever we're attaching it to and have that big loop available to us so we can pass our spool through the loop creating a girth hitch for us. From there, we are all ready to launch our DSMB. Click or tap the screen now so you can learn how to do that properly and safely. With that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving. <laughs>